power of a podcast extends well beyond plugging in the mic. So if you're ready to learn how it can help you build a big business, then I'm your best friend. Hi, I'm Joanne Bolt, and I am obsessed with all things podcasting and creating an unapologetically big revenue business with it. From podcast guesting to podcast hosting and everything in between, we're going to dive into it all and show you step by awesome step how using a podcast can and will grow your business. So grab a glass of wine and pop your headphones on because girlfriend, happy hour has begun here on The Beat Word. That way, if I do have an interview that I'm not loving, it gives me a great excuse to wrap it up because you know walking into my podcast, unless you're somehow on there and have never heard it before, that my episodes are not an hour long. Like they are 15 to 20 minutes. So if you can't get your shit done in that kind of time, that's on you, but it gets me an out. Yes. And then if it goes much longer than that, I figure out how to break it up into two podcast episodes. For sure. (laughs) But it, it just gives me an out. It sets a boundary without me having to be Mm -hmm. rude about it. What general advice do you have for intro and outro? Like things to include, not include, do we switch it up often, how often? You have 13 seconds to make someone want to keep listening to you. 13 seconds. So make it count. Mm -hmm. So like how long your intros are? No, but within that first 13 seconds, if you haven't captured someone's attention, they're going to just go to the next one. Mm -hmm. So you at least need to be clear on at least the tone. You know, if you're like really a therapist kind of speaker, and this is how you do your episodes, like more power to you, but you better not do an intro like this. I mean, because (laughs) I better get an episode that matches the intro's tonality and Mm -hmm. energy level. Um, but don't also, you know, tell me in the first 13 seconds that all I like to do is mix cocktails and then I'm going to talk about business structure. Mm-hmm. At least give me an idea what, what we're in for. And I don't, well, I, yeah, I change mine all the time. I change mine too. <laughs> I change everything. We just discussed that. I know. Um, also I think that there's like, okay, so when you're podcasting, you I will figure out like all of a sudden you have like a podcast version of your voice. Yes. <laughs> Don't yeah. try not to. Like I have really worked on training myself to not turn that on. It's weird. Just once you're sitting there in the mic, you're just like, it's because you're by hey yourself. Guys. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. weird. Yeah. And turn, don't like, I will literally stop recording, like slap the shit out of myself, <laughs> go back and then just be like, all right, my loves today. We are like, this is how I talk right now. Yeah. Um, And that was a big part of why I, like, stopped being, like, so vanilla and so edited um, years ago and just started talking the way I talk. Like, I say fuck. I I cuss. I'm really sarcastic and blunt. And it started, like, people started dropping. Then when they started rising up again, it was the right people. So now, like, when they come into my social media and they leave comments or they leave a review on the podcast, they're saying things like, yes, now the reviews are giving new people an indication of what to expect because my people are like, I love it, like, the right people. So I don't, like, my biggest advice for the intro and starting a podcast at all is just to, like, get out of that, like, podcast voice mindset. Same with your social media videos. Like, if people... If you guys like all followed me and we, I just got here and started talking like this, you would all know like I'm being myself on social. Like obviously sometimes you have to be like short and like fast so you're, you know, you're being more pointed. But my voice doesn't really change and, and it used to. It's just weird. Like it, you're not being fake. It's just automatic. It's weird. So yeah, intro, outro episode should all just feel like you're, you're sitting here and you're talking the way you talk. So then my question to that is 13 seconds got that. How long is an intro or an outro supposed to be? I think less than 30 seconds. Less than 30 seconds. My old one was so long. I love how you used to say, though, and I don't know, I don't think you do it anymore, like, hey, mamas, just so you know, I do say the F word because I want to be mom. I do it. Self. Still on do you there. still put that on there? Yeah. I didn't hear it the just other so day. You, know, you might want to have headphones because, yep. well, well also, it's weird that people were, people were so, like, upset because, like, you're literally like, we talk about like sex and orgasms and like yeah. all kinds of stuff. And then I'd say shit and you're like, <gasps> my kid said it. <laughs> okay. Is he also saying like, 
orgasm and like I know. I don't, okay. If you think you're 13 year old and saying fuck, I'm sorry. I like the topics are so adult. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about like depression, like ser- serious stuff. Yeah. So it's always like, oh, but me saying holy, like, what the hell is like, oh my god, I'm unfollowing you. Like, okay, okay bye. Yeah. Yeah. I had someone ask me one time. They were like, why don't you? Or, you know, should you just check the little explicit mark? And mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I can, but half the time people don't even look at that. Right. And, or they see it and it puts them off. Like, it, I would, so you have to be okay with the fact, and, and I am because I check in on mine, but you have to be okay with the fact that, yes, if yours is checked because you do curse or whatever in yours, Apple Podcasts, Spotify's, all those, they will not recommend you as often because they're paying attention to the listener too. Unless it's someone like me and almost every podcast I listen to says explicit, you will get recommended for me. But if you're someone that has a really good mix of explicit and not, I'm probably not going to get recommended for you unless it's, you know, Apple has a really good algorithm that says, oh no, really? Because it's checked. So Mm -hmm. just be okay. But again, do you really want your listeners there who are going to get offended if you drop an F-bomb? Because you, I mean. So my answer to that, my like, my solution for myself to that was I do not check it. But I have the disclaimer in the beginning, like, yeah, okay, mom's like, I know you, yeah, I know you got little yeah. ears, like, just so you know, like, I do curse, and we are talking about adult topics, so grab your headphones and let's dive in. It's like three well, seconds. What's really interesting about that to me, and this isn't a question, it's a comment. The reason I got drawn into Brene Brown in the first place was because she cussed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't. It's in such a professional me. niche, yeah, and but she's there was just something herself. about it where yeah. she was like, and I think something similar happened to her that happened to you that you just described. She was supposed to go speak somewhere, and they said, you can't do this and you can't do that. And she was like, well, then I can't speak for you because this is not who I am. Mm-hmm. And I just loved that. I was like, okay. And what's been interesting since I've started to put stuff on socials in the last couple of months, my mom messaged me and was like, that's not the Julie I know. What's wrong? You look so sad. I don't, I'm, and I was like, <laughs> because I am sad. And I'm not going to yeah. show up on social media as something that I'm not. That pisses me off. Yeah. So I'm like, no, I'm just going to be who I am. And she was like, well, okay, I guess we're going to agree to disagree. My mom's doing the same thing, too. She's like, oh, but you're saying you don't Yeah, my mom does that. I She's done that. Right? Mm-hmm. I don't. Are you not listening to what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. shit day. <laughs> to make clear, that's why I'm on here. Yeah. To, to help mm-hmm. people see that this is normal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sorry. I just Let's had to say that. Thank you for doing what you do. I mean, my parents still can't figure out what a podcast is. <laughs> It's good. I've never it's good. To a podcast. I know. Like my I can't parents tell you stopped how after often my dad is like, "So what do you do? I podcast." Please explain that again. I'm like, "Okay, dad." <laughs> so basically, I talk for 20 minutes, or sometimes I interview for 20 minutes, and it goes out over the airwaves. So you're a radio star? No, I am not. But I have, a, yeah. And then I'm like, you know. And then he's like, "Wait a minute." So I'll pull up a podcast player, and I'm like showing him, you know, everything, and he's like. Well, where do I where do I like put my subscription in my Apple Card, and I'm like, podcasts are free. <laughs> well, how do you support your family in private school? If yeah, you have a podcast that it's free, and I'm like, I just I just can't. Really like, I can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dad, would you like to see all my metrics? I mean, where do you want? <laughs> do you know the coolest thing happened to me when my mom was here from Philly? We stopped on the side of the road for the guy who was barbecuing. He's in Gainesville, and he's there every Friday and Saturday. And I'm like, you know, we're stopping. We got some barbecue. So anyway. So I tell him, like, a very short little thing of what I do. My mom ended up going back, and I was in the car. And he says to my mom, he's like, I, I've been looking at her business card for, like, 20 minutes. I don't get it. <laughs> And my mom was actually able to answer. It's so good. Oh, wow. My job is totally made up. I mean, it yeah. really is. So, like, it is hard for people to, especially the 75-year-old guy who's barbecuing right. on the side of the road. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. right. And But my 65-year-old mother, who has had to get on board with the entrepreneurship thing, she's like, oh, yeah. And she's like, you know. And she carries my business cards around in her purse. Oh. And she'll put them on bulletin boards and coffee shops. Oh. That's the only, like, level of support that she can, like, it's like grasp. That's what she gets. So oh, it's cute. my favorite thing ever. But she was able to explain it and I was like, oh, what a breakthrough for us. Well, part of that is because you know how to explain it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. I have simplified. Yeah. You know who your I audience is. Yeah. You simplify. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, how's your mommy business? I'm like, shh. Oh, my dad's like, you really aren't selling houses? I'm like, no, I'm not. Can I ask you real estate advice? Sure. 
I want to know more about YouTube. Is there a difference between YouTube and YouTube podcasts? No. Okay. Do I need an audiogram? Because you said you post yours and you're doing it without video. So that was a personal decision that I made because I, now when I get in my goal in the next 12 months, and I think you're the same way, is more in-person video recordings. Mm -hmm. So when that starts to happen, I'm going to go back to the podcast being video on YouTube. For now, I just, I'm so tired of always having the audio and the video on Zoom. I don't mind the audio, but the video on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that's something someone wants to watch. It's not engaging. It's not engaging. And so I tested my own theory out with me as my beta tester. Mm -hmm. And I was, and I put some podcasts up on my TV that were just amazing people and found that after two minutes I was working and just listening because ultimately a podcast is audible. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I just made a decision to go with audiogram and not worry about it. Because right now, YouTube isn't the main focus piece that I'm working on. But it's good for SEO. Yeah. It's great for SEO. It's great for searchability. It's great for discoverability. I mean, it's going to take them forever. It's going to be, you know, but, to get it added there. But and I really I mean, think what you have to do is it. you have to hone into who your ideal listener is. Yeah. If your ideal listener is a mom who's listening to it while she's making dinner or putting her makeup on or, cook, you know, whatever, she doesn't need it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. If your ideal listener is someone who is sitting in an office, you know, contemplating divorce or whatever, like they go to YouTube to find out information, you might need a video on YouTube. Like it, it really is who your audience is, I think. So would it be good for SEO purposes? Like even though that's not where my audience is at. I think, I wait, well, your audience is not on YouTube. Like I feel I like everybody is. Right now. My I mean, YouTube, similar. I don't even try and it pops off. Like if I do anything, right. I'm trying now. So let me just give you, uh, this is what I've done and it may be something will resonate and help <laughs> because I, I feel like we get very all or nothing. Like, I'm either doing YouTube mm-hmm. and doing it really well or I'm not at all. And what I'm like that naturally, but what I've been doing is recording some in a studio down the street from my house and it's like really cheap. It's like 180 for like four hours of okay. studio time. Studio. It's good like a vibes. podcast studio. Yeah, good vibes. Good vibes. And I go there, Brian films and I'm recording. And so I have the video and I'm doing the podcast like I normally would. So we're doing audio and we don't do that for every episode, but we do that for some of them. So you don't put every episode on YouTube? No. So like it's not so all or nothing. Like some of them are, and I like going to the studio. It makes me feel more elevated. It's fun. It's just more fun than sitting in my office by myself. And then the other thing we do is I do pep talk episodes sometimes because I put out three episodes a week. So some of them are like less than five minutes, less than seven minutes. Um, and they're pep talks. So we'll take the audio and put it over B-roll like on YouTube. So it'll be like a, a pep talk episode is like, literally like listen like you're a good mom stop like with this inner dialogue like whatever it's like a few minutes long and that will go over b-roll of me like doing the laundry hanging out with the kids like swimming like making dinner like whatever it is and those go on youtube because they're almost like little guided meditations or like affirmations and those go really well so YouTube, like, it doesn't have to be, like, and now all my episodes are video, and I go do it here, and this is my SEO strategy, and then I do, like, it can be messy. It can be some and some. Right. And then just play with it and see. But I'm in the mom niche, and right. they, like, I don't even try, and I I do good over there. And they people have told me they find me a lot over there. I just saw what you title it. Just yeah. make sure your title is something that is searchable. and right. Don't be cute. Just, yeah. just yeah. yeah, SEO. Speaking of SEO. Tell me more about your mama show notes that you put on. You talk about the baby show notes on Apple and the mama show notes that are on your podcast. Are you putting the whole transcript up? Or I do. I have a link to the transcript for SEO purposes, but right. the blog where I write the more in-depth episode show notes, I am really talking to the person who is listening there and I am throwing in a lot of SEO rich words. So now I've got the chance of you finding me not only from the transcript SEO, which is just crawling on Google and stuff, right. but I'm also capturing the, some of those same SEO words. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I utilize that website like that. Yeah. And I will, you're, you're going to laugh, but like I'm the worst at SEO. So I will go to Pinterest to figure out SEO straight up almost every time. I just wanted to know the basics. Just give me like, what do I need to do? And I'm not going to hire someone for like $30,000. And I'm not going to gonna do on. one of these big fancy like subscription 
websites. I have to remember a lot. No, I literally go to YouTube. I mean, uh, Pinterest. And I'm like, well, if I'm doing an episode about X, Y, Z, I literally type that into Pinterest and I see like what little colored eggs show up underneath. I call Mm -hmm. them colored eggs underneath. I'm like, oh, you know what that tells me? That's what other people were searching for with this. Those are my words. It's really like, it's really not that deep. Like it's just pretty straightforward. Like whatever the first four words are, I'm like, I'm going to throw all four of those into this episode somewhere. Yeah. And how, I'm sorry, sort of the second of the order. How did you find those four words? Oh, I go to Pinterest. Interesting. Okay. So. I I love me some Pinterest for so many reasons. Mm -hmm. Me too. I have Pinterest, but I use it for totally different. I, at the beginning or the end of 2022, started really looking at Pinterest from a business owner's perspective and not from a, I just want a recipe perspective. And it was a game changer for me. Same. It is, it's just like a free hack into like making everything increased. Yes. Like helping people find you. Um, also content ideas when your brain oh, God, is yes. done, like I go on there and just search keywords in my niche and see like what is performing really well. I don't read the article or watch the thing, but I just look at the, like the titles of like ideas. And then I go and create my own content on those topics. Mm-hmm. Wow. All the time. Mm-hmm. So then TikTok do for that. That you're searching, like for me, adoptee or adoption yes. or adoption trauma, like put it in there. Yeah. See what pops see up. What up. Yeah. Or like what to do if adoption situation what to do wow. about how to That's and you're gonna see what people and, are and pinterest and is gonna them. give you the pins that right. are responding the best the most. Continue to do and that and so it's always yes. updating and so literally Outer. if you just and, yeah. just make your own like little rule in your head like i'm gonna put the words in and whatever the first four things that pop up uh, that's what i'm gonna talk about so when i get an episode idea that is one of my first steps in the process of like Again, not like the inspired ones that are just like a few minutes that I'm just sitting down and riffing. But like when I'm like, I really want to do an episode about amicable divorce. And like it's so big in my head. I don't know how to talk about this. So I'll go and I'll search and I'll get like, okay, this is from this. And then I'll intentionally put those words in there so that I can get found and also helps give me direction on such a big topic. So the big episodes, I do like research and Pinterest and strategy and then I go from there. Maybe I talk to best friend. You what? <laughs> Can you come on my sh- so my show? Me, let me know. Guys, don't look it up because I will cry. But on Reddit, literally everyone is like, like they're lying. We just vacation together. Yeah, I love him. I just like don't want to be married to him though. Yeah, no, like pass. We have the best relationship ever. Him and my boyfriend golf together. It's yes, great. him, him and my man are like best friends. It's the best. I, we got married when we were teenagers. Yeah. Like I don't, it's we're good best. now. Yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Come on my show and talk. Yay. <laughs> okay. Good job for plugging the whole time I'm just going to be like, see? <laughs> see? Close <laughs> people just like, okay. Okay. just like drop. Some of my best friends are like, they got divorced and they seem to be the best married couple ever until we all found out he was cheating on her yeah. with her best friend. But oh, that's sweet. Love super that. sweet. Really How, awesome. But here's the weird yeah. thing. Like, that's a really tough situation. She still doesn't talk to her best friend from high school. But it actually, like now divorce, they're a better couple. Like they parent better. They do everything. And I'm like, that is so weird. Y'all are actually like more fun to hang around now. That's together, what my not parents together. said, which is huge because they were so mad at me. Of course, then I look at my husband. I'm like, don't get any ideas. Yeah. No. We're still good. Sit down. Yeah. 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 Sit your ass down. <laughs> it's cool for them. Yeah. For Love us. that for them. <laughs> you don't get to upgrade. You're stuck. So um, two questions for me from what you said. <laughs> What's an SEO? Search engine optimization. Ah, okay. Got That's it. okay. Um, but notice I'm not saying at the beginning. No disclaimer. Uh, and then what's an audiogram? What is audio? So audiograms are, if you take the audio from your podcast or your live stream or whatever, and you just take the pure audio and you want to make a graphic from it, there's that little waveform. Yeah. That shows up and you can do a free one on Canva where you just get a static waveform that doesn't actually move or you can upgrade on a group, you know, a company like Audiogram. It's literally the name of the company. It's a website and it's cheap as shit. And you can then upload your audio to it and pick a waveform that actually moves in time to your voice. So then it kind of gives someone a visual of you speaking. I'm a visual-ish person, so I like it's that It's just version. those weird little things that keep people more engaged. Yeah. And the we've been testing the, like, drop-off on reels. And it is 
they do not leave my reel if I have something like that moving. Yeah. Um, or just pop up a few emojis throughout the talking. Or the best thing is don't just sit there and talk. Like, I'll say something while I'm putting a post-it on the wall. And then I'll say something the next thing while I'm writing something. Then I say the next thing while I'm switching the laundry. Like, just moving scenes. It's kind of exhausting because you're thinking about the content and what you're going to do in the next couple seconds scene. But it has been truly, truly worth it. And my whole business, like, my business coaching is for moms. And I'm always like, that's a fucking waste of time. Like, don't. Like, I'm all about saving time and focusing on what matters. That is worth it. Well, because people have they to watch don't drop off. Times. Because if you're doing something, they have to watch once to see what you're doing. Yes. They have to watch once to hear what you're saying. The views because are crazy. <coughs> yep. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, you get it. So that okay, that's interesting. So how how do you do that and do something? Do you record yourself? Help me understand. Okay. So I'm super just. I don't. Like, I have tripods all around my house and stuff, but usually I'm holding it, so it's a little more, like, raw, and, like, it does kind of move around, which I just feel like is more and more engaging. It's more real. So I'll be like, okay, here's, like, a few bullet points of what I'm going to say, and then I'll be like, okay, first scene, I'm going to be, like, moving my mouse on my computer, looking at my screen and talking at the same time. What am I going to be saying? There's the There's the line. And, like, I just say it while I'm doing it. Like, not looking at the camera, being busy and talking. It's just, it's, it's less boring than like, have you ever felt like, like no one cares, Mm -hmm. stop. So like I look at the camera less or I'm like leaning over the counter, wiping the counter or like doing my lips. And then they're like, oh, what, what was that rare beauty? Was it like, it's just, it's silly, but it is engaging. And, and they are paying attention to what I'm saying after the second or third time they watch it. And they're engaging based on the content as well. Some people will do the same thing. Like, they'll make their cup of coffee. They'll be doing the laundry. So you can just pick one action. Yeah. And that, like, the one girl did a real, I'm not into coffee at all. The one girl um, would do, like, some kind of fancy coffee. Thing like espresso scratch. machine or something? I think she was even grinding her own beans. Like, she was literally from scratch making this and cup of coffee. And trying to talk. And she would be talking. So, like, my ADHD, absolutely not. But she would do it, and that was her video. With the, every single time, it'd be her making her cup of coffee and then talking about this topic. Yes, I've so done that with my like, matcha, and it's just it seems hard. But you just you're you're recording a clip, like I mean, a couple seconds. You're like everybody thinks that divorce has to be a war, and you're like grinding your coffee or your matcha or switching the laundry, whatever. And then the next thing is, but in my experience, and you're doing, you're still doing the same thing, but you're just. You're not sitting there like you don't have to stream it all out at once while you also make the perfect cup of coffee. It's like clip, cut, clip, cut, clip, cut, like just these little hard, like watch my recent ones and they're like fast clips and I'm not even like doing anything extravagant. I'm just in the kitchen, but they're fast clips and they're highly edited. There is no ums. There's no nothing. Like, I cut everything out so that it's to the fucking point. And I'm also, like, kind of moving around and doing something. You know who does that really, really well? The clip cut, if you ever want to see an example of, I couldn't even tell you her name. She keeps it black and keeps it brief. And oh, my gosh, yes. And she in outside. I love what her. What is her name? I will find her. Yeah. She does it so well. Or she clip, cut, clip, cut, clip, cut. And she has gone so incredibly viral. She does the same thing in every video. She's sipping a cup of tea. Mm-hmm. It's clipped and cut. And You use cap cut. Yeah. Going, and just, I mean, I mean, yeah, like, all the way up to when I watch when my mouth is already starting to say the word, then I start cut it. Yeah. Yeah. Giselle Ugarte taught mm-hmm. me that. She's like, because then people think that they almost miss something at the beginning of your reel, and then they pay more attention. It's so, it's yeah. like the silly, I will tell detailed you, things like that. On my podcast, the best real engagement, I just started doing this. You know, I used to do the traditional, which everybody did, which is stupid. Don't do what everyone does. You know, a little audiogram of your podcast and that becomes your podcast reel for the episode or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, well, let me test something. And so I started just grabbing the phone right after an interview and just dropping some like, I love this interview because da 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 And then I just save it. So when that episode comes out, that's the reel that we're using. And that gets so much more engagement. Mm-hmm. And listenership on that episode has been increasing. They because trust you. Right after. So well, I and the only reason I did it right after is because then I remember what the fuck we talked right, about. Right, that's what I, <laughs> I mean. It's the aim. I could do it the morning it drops, but I'd have to listen to the whole episode again. Exactly. Yeah, you know? I remember. So I like, loved her, but yeah, yeah 
like, like that was a great conversation, but what was it's it? It's like that? you're batching. Like you're yeah. already in that mental zone. So yeah. You might as well. So when we are, so I have actually started leaving in between interviews. Like if I batch one day, mm -hmm. and people should not expect you to remember. I mean, come on. But it's in the cloud. It's all like up my there. feelings are not gonna be hurt if you don't if you tell me you don't remember my episode. Like, oh my god, I hope that doesn't hurt people's feelings. I don't remember shit. I don't, I don't even remember what I did this morning. I don't either. I do. Well, you Serious. Were saying, That's think, true. Thank you. The episode was what we talked about. If I would invite them back again, if I would bring them into my community to speak to my community, like mm -hmm. I used that to vet my speakers for my community. Did everyone get lunch ordered? Yes. That's really smart and the right way to use a podcast because a podcast is free. So I hate when people like pour everything into their pot. Like you should pour a lot, but don't give them the best the connections sure. you have. And like, yeah, like it yeah. should be like, oh, did you like this seven minutes? We have an hour conversation yeah. in the community. Yeah. Good for you. I like doing it in real time though, because your energy is also where it should be. Yeah. If it's yeah. if it's outside of the conversation, your energy is going to be different. Yeah, but yeah. I think that raw excitement, even if it's not pretty, even if there's some ums, if it's not yeah. you know, I agree. or whatever. Yeah. Like even if it's just a bubble of okay? talking, that you sinking in that chair. Yeah, it's like it's a sinker. <laughs> no, but that makes sense. Yeah. And so so then my question is, do you have somebody do your cuts or do you do it? I do them. Because I just already have it on my phone. Well, right. And I just know, I know in my head all the things that I was saying. So I know what, like, I just do. I do my cuts at the end of the day, like, in bed when I'm watching The Office or something. Which is so, because I've tried, but I, I'm just not, not good at it. And yeah. Maybe it just is because I'm or so maybe you're bad. overthinking it. Well, I no, think, I mean, I've missed, like, what you're talking about. Like, I'm like, okay, I see exactly when I finish. Let me try and catch it right back. I'm just like, I can't see The more you do it, the better it will get. I was going to say, you get it to a point where you can just do it. Like, I mean, like, yeah. Lakin will do it sometimes if it's like, like, if I'm batching content, I'll, we have a shared folder, and I'll just put it in that drive folder and be like, there's videos in there, and like, she'll, she'll do it. She's not dumb. Right. But like, if I'm just in it, and I know, and I have a vision right. for it, I'm just sure. going to do it. Yeah. Right. And I, I, totally I enjoy it that. too, so yeah. it's not like something yeah. that I hate. You know what I mean? I try to keep one day um, on my calendar. And it's generally, you're going to laugh, it's generally when it's like a week and a half, two weeks after I get my hair done because then I like my hair. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but I'll just keep a running list in my phone of like ideas for reels. And then I'll spend one or two days that week and I'll just change outfits all day long yep. and earrings all day long. And I'll spend the whole day, I'll just put ring lights up all over the house. And I'm like, okay, we're going to create Film so everything you do. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, that's. Pop out of nowhere, but still, yeah. the wild thing. Yeah. Well, I liked the one where you were never yeah, going under the sink. That one actually frustrated me to create because I really wanted a certain angle and I could not get it to work. So <laughs> that's the worst when you have a vision and it's not going. But what yeah. I'm hearing from you guys is it's not like you're doing something that's related to whatever it is that you're sharing. You were under the sink doing. In something fact, it I don't think it like, should be. Yeah, I, was I don't like think upside down be. painting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't yeah. think it should be related. I think it's more engaging and kind of like what the fuck. Let me watch this if you're not. I personally also think when you create reels like that at your house, like you, A, people are going to stop and watch your reel multiple times because they either want it. They, they are so damn they wanna nosy. They, are they want to so see your house. Nosy. They want to see your house. They want to see if they can find your pile of laundry in the back or like what color cabinets are you, do you have the right hand? Like they want into your life that way because they're just inherently nosy. Well, that's fine. You know why? Because if you watch my reel six times trying to figure out like why I was painting underneath What's there, in the photo in the background, then Instagram is giving me a lot of, you know, points because that reel keeps getting watched. And then they, then they're like, it's super engaging. And the next thing you know, they're showing it to other people. So like, go for it. You want to be nosy? Like, be nosy. But like, I think business should be playful, like play with it. Like what is like, I was going through something where I've been like I've been dating someone and people were freaking out wanting to know. So I purposely made a reel where you could kind of see him on the side of my sunglasses reflection. And it was the highest viewed. It was so, people were all so annoying, so nosy and acting like I'm not, like, I don't know. Like I didn't do that on purpose. Right. Like, I know. Oh, she messed up. But it sent my content out to so many moms. I got so many like good followers just because of the engagement. And then it was sending it out to the right people because of the words I'm seeing in the video and the message. So play with it like what could you do that's just like a little bit like huh what's in the background there like what's yeah. where one girl she puts ra random shit in a blender for her reels I can't remember her name like stuff that doesn't go in a blender 
like oh, socks and like a tennis ball and she's just talking she's just like and then you want to do this and the engagement is like what in the <laughs> fuck are you making one. she's brilliant like it's so silly it's like, so no she's just putting stuff in and she's she's good pouring almond milk on the tennis ball and the socks oh, and like the crinkled up paper and then she just totally and then but she it works and her She's hilarious. Well, I would be engaged in that. She's a comedian that teaches other comedians how to make money online, so it kind of fits. Like she's like, what the hell? Yeah. But the point is, like, do something that's not related. Like, yeah. yeah. I remember telling Sarah every single time I go to Maxwell, it's like thousands and thousands of viewers. Because people want to know what's going on with you. Yeah. Nosy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's great. I mean, it's, it's the exact same message. Yeah. But it's like, I just shifted it. Like, <laughs> what you have to really watch out for, well, though, guys, <laughs> is to make sure, like, it is awesome to have reels that go viral. It's awesome to have a lot of followers on Instagram. But if it's not... It doesn't matter. Yeah, if, if they're not engaging or if it's not funneling them into your podcast or it's not converting them into, you know, purchasers that will create income for you and your family, then... Mm -hmm. It's just fun. Like that, then it's your habit or your hobby, right? And so if you're going to use the social media to drive people to a podcast or to drive people to your offers or just to increase visibility, you got to also still think strategically and how to tie it together. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, it really is just a, a hobby. I want you to tell me more about Pinterest because every time I pull my community, none, they say we're not on Pinterest anymore. Every single time I pull them, Facebook, Instagram, like they're like, we don't use Pinterest. You'd love it's Pinterest. one of the highest engines. It's right. a search engine. I think that like, maybe they're not. I... Maybe like you're not asking them what they're using Pinterest for. They're yes. Saying they're not using it. Like, they like don't maybe they're not going on and like and... putting outfits together or recipes. Like they're not using it for that necessarily, but it is a search engine. Right. And it is and me, widely I'm used by mothers more than anybody. Yeah. Yes. Right. I mean, Pinterest is audience is 97% women. Um, so I played around a lot with what I was posting on Pinterest. And then I started looking at what got the most engagement. And generally what you have to think about with Pinterest that is different from YouTube as a search engine, YouTube, they want to, you know, they want to, they're searching for you. They want to see you show them something, talk to them. They want to get to know you on Pinterest. They're coming, they're coming with pure curiosity. How do I how do I make the perfect carbonara? How do I put an outfit together? What color should I paint a room? So if you look at Pinterest through that lens and you form everything with the how-to, easy steps, quick download, and not so much, let me talk to you for 30, you know, 30 seconds about why you can have an amicable, di amicable divorce, but rather top 10 attorneys for that. Like now you've got your Pinterest user. So I have a question for Jill then, like in regards to that, are my higher ticket clients that can afford me going to be on Pinterest? Yes. If we're looking how are the how-tos, am I attracting in then that, that beginner level? Yes. They still are. Okay. Okay. I'll just throw this out there. I'm not broke. Right. And I go to Pinterest. Yeah, me too. Same. It's what you're searching. Like it's what you're, you're searching. searching. So it's not how to start your business. The phrasing. Business. Yes, the phrasing. And again, the, words, the yeah. reason, the, the thing I use Pinterest for the most is going back to that drive them to the website concept that it's still my welcome mat. It's still social media for me. And so if I can get you off of Pinterest, and, and here's the other thing I love about Pinterest, they want to bounce you out of their program. Right. Like YouTube mm -hmm. does not want you to do that. Instagram will ding you if everything right. you're doing is sending them somewhere else. Right. Pinterest is like, come on, sister, get on and get off That's and get mm -hmm. in and get out. Yeah. It's a collection of yeah. the internet. And so they actually encourage you to put other links on. And so I use it to send people to the website because then they can search around on the website. They can find another episode they're interested in, or they can purchase something. And again, they're picking up pixels. So what are you doing there? Are you just posting like like your cover, like, of uh, like, Hey, this episode is about, so like if I do an episode video. about, you know, creating an email content, mm -hmm. all I'm really then doing is I'm going to write the show notes for the blog. And then I'm going to say, what are, how can I phrase this in Pinterest phrase? And it's like, here are three ways to never lose another email subscriber. And then I a good put a graphic that was a good on. one. Thank you. And then I put a, you know, a, a Pinterest type 
graphic on it. All you have to do is change out some of your graphics. And now I send it to that episode and it might have even a freebie on it. And the thing with, I, I also love about Pinterest is you can literally create one pin 10 times and just change one word on it or one color on it. And Pinterest is like, repin it all you want. We don't care. It doesn't have to be original. Yes. Yeah, they don't care. It's the ultimate ease They are quantity platform. over quality every single day. And so I'm like, I can take one pin, make six colors, change the font once. Mm -hmm. I'll have it sent to the same blog. It all says the same shit, every single bit of it. Pin it to six different boards. And now I'm done for the day with Pinterest. Take like a quote from an episode and just make like 10 different pins on that quote. Obviously something that's like powerful and short, sure. but yeah, it's, and it's easy. Where do you make your pins? Canva. Canva. And I use Tailwind to schedule them. Yeah, same. What I'm noticing now is on Google, when you Google something, the first cluster of responses is actually the way they're making it like a grid of Pinterest. So mm -hmm. even if you're not a quote unquote Pinterest person, Google will actually push you to Pinterest. So Pinterest mm -hmm. is now on top of the Google search before it's even before the ads. It'll it'll have the Pinterest logo and then like a grid of maybe six or nine pins in that how to. I've been noticing it in the last maybe month, two months, that the actual it for Google searches is pushing you to Pinterest. And you're not creating new content. You're not like adding to your plate of content to create. You're advertising. You're literally just exactly. taking whatever you've already created in your blog and your podcast and you're just picking it out and saying, okay. If I was to go to Pinterest and search for this, what would catch my eye mm -hmm. to make me want to listen to this episode? I'm just changing It's just the like words. on Instagram, the juiciest part of what you're going to say needs to go at the top of your caption. Yep. The Pinterest is like the juiciest part of what you're promoting. And then you just re redo it like 10. I sometimes do like 12 pins for something and just make it look different. Like if I'm in there and I'm enjoying myself in Canva, like what the hell, I'll just make more. Some yeah. of them have a little freebie mock-up on them. Some of them are just text. Some have a photo. Some have a purple. Some have pink. And then just it's just stretching what you already did. It's like smarter, not harder vibes. Honestly, it's probably a great thing to A-B test. A-B test. Oh, it's awesome. A hundred percent. Just to see, okay, it's, it's the awesome. same exact thing. I use different colors. And then you'll notice a theme of like yeah. what really hits for your niche. And then you can just like, oh, well, now I don't have to make 12. I can make five sure. of this one. Yeah. 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 And again, then you can drive traffic from Pinterest to your website and then they pop into Instagram and there you are again. Mm -hmm. And you're the only person talking about this topic for that person. Right. So you become the natural person they're going to buy the course from or mm -hmm. attend the conference or. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you went in in 2022, I think that's what you said, and kind of revamped your pin, Pinterest, like did you get rid of all of your pins or did you start a new Pinterest for your business? So you can actually, you can hide boards so that only you see them. So then I could keep all my pens I had pinned, but I'm such a visual person. It drove me nuts. Mm -hmm. So I actually went and created a separate account yeah. and then <laughs> repinned all my personal pens to the separate account. Yeah. And that's the one that's on my phone because I know usually I'm going to look up a recipe or something. I'm in the kitchen. I'm on, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I keep the business one on my laptop intentionally so that when I log in there, I like, I'm only seeing pens related to Joanne Bolt and not, you know, the one. I think that's helpful. Actually. And you don't have to do that as like extra work. But for me being a visual yeah. OCD type person, I would have I done like, the same thing. I would just start a new Pinterest for my business. That's you just don't, I know that. That also works. So by the time like, I thought about that, I was, you know, it's already, yeah. yeah. You don't want to be like deleting a bunch of pens. I think that's like well, like the only way you can kind of get like punished on Pinterest is yeah, like deleting, the shadow band clearing. You do that. Yeah, so just hide them or start new, like you said. Yeah. Do they have business accounts that will let you see Oh yeah, yeah. Pixels, analytics, Lots of stuff, all the yeah. things. Yeah. That's really I love my numbers. That's so funny. I don't. I do not. I, do, I forget, and I have to be reminded to look, and then I'm like, oh, so yeah. No, nope. it actually really sucks. I'm gonna. <laughs> I didn't know. I got a reminder on my calendar. But I don't need to be reminded because I love them. <laughs> Anytime I'm like, I'm not sure what to do with myself today. And I want to feel very like purposeful in the business. I am pulling up a spreadsheet somewhere, whether I need to or not. <laughs> Sorry. All right. We probably have time for one more question before lunch gets here. So does anyone have another one? <laughs> <laughs> Amy, you had your list. Have we gone yeah, through it? Have we exhausted the Amy list? I know. Right? What? Your hands are 
wondering. I, I have a question. Is, yeah, I was just like seeing it over there. I'm Sorry. Curious yeah. both your perspectives on this because you've been through stuff, Joanne. But just as I grow, my mind can go to fear of like identity theft or like people just getting triggered by my account and reporting it for no reason and like it being taken off of Instagram. Like, what are things that I can do to protect myself? Grow your email list mm -hmm. yeah. and your podcast. Honestly, that one of the reasons I got into podcasting was, and I don't know how you feel about this, but you own your RSS feed. Mm -hmm. And your so email list. If Apple today decides for whatever reason we're no longer gonna have podcast, your RSS feed is still on all the other platforms. If something happens today, like Spotify has kind of quit doing the podcast, it doesn't really matter. Or I host on Buzzsprout. If Buzzsprout goes bankrupt, God forbid, and just shuts it down with no, you know, warning or whatever, I can go open up on Podbean and just pull my RSS over and all my material is still there and I don't miss a beat. I own mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. My email list is the same. My text list community list, the same. Like you're not going to, you might have emails that go out that Yahoo, you know, puts his marks as spam or but that's like the worst thing that's going to happen if and this actually happened to me a couple of years ago someone hacked my facebook account and the next thing i knew i had an iranian guy with a big like machine gun on as my profile photo oh, i got nice. major trouble with facebook for that and i'm like clearly that's not me like do you see this do you see him like what well, i you know I mean, now I have two-factor authentication. I'm verif I go ahead and it's, pay for verification because they, they'll bump you up in the support list. But mm -hmm. my biggest thing is I'm like, if you ever get hacked on you know, Instagram or TikTok or one of those, or they just think that you're doing something inappropriate for whatever reason, and they take you down, like you have no recourse. Yeah. You don't own that material. Me too. My, my, my ads. It was because my niece, who was three years old, was at my house, and she had her shirt off in the background, and I took a picture, and I got reported for child pornography. <gasps> yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yep. I lost everything. I had like two or someone clones your account. Or, I mean, but guess what? If you've got a really awesome email list, you shoot out an email or text message, and you let people know yeah. what happened, when you expect yeah. to be back online, and where to go find you. Yeah. And, well, and a uh, little heads up if you guys are promoting your business on Facebook, it's actually against community guidelines to promote a business on a personal account. Yeah. So we all do it and they don't enforce it consistently or much at all, but randomly they will decide to enforce it. So if you're promoting your business on your personal Facebook page, it's against community guidelines. They will delete your account. And they don't give I mean, you a warning. I still do it. Just your Facebook but, account. They can't come after everything else. Oh, yes, your they Facebook can. Meta owns it all. Yeah. Well, and your personal account is the basis Instagram. of all the other connections, yeah. like everything else. But it won't else. go to your Instagram. It won't delete your Instagram. It'll just delete your Facebook. Which is interesting because they're together. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah, but they still act. They still treat it they, like separate Yeah, platforms. they treat them as separate. I think it's separate like accounts. do two-factor, like do what you can and don't be focused on that fear because yeah. you're just like giving it more energy. But yeah. then also like invest in what you own. So that's why like my, my creative energy for free stuff goes all into the podcast and my email list. Like I keep it super pruned. Me like I too. do not have dead subs on there. Those women are my people and I protect it and I, I protect what I send to them. I listen to them. Like those are mine that way. Like if social media goes like, I really, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. So How um, three months, every three months. Me too. Same. I have like a process. Same. Six is good. Like no one clears their list. <laughs> Six is good. But I do every quarter. I do. Yeah. I have like a true reflection of what is my open rate? What is my picture rate? What, what is yes. true versus I don't care about the volume. If somebody's never opened an email I've sent, like get them off. They're not interested in what I have. Like I want those true numbers. Mm-hmm. And I'd rather have a smaller list that's engaged than a big list that's dead. I also feel like keeping my list clear has helped me get a huge list. Like there's, I think my list is 200 something now, 200,000 something. And it's, it's grown since I've started clearing it. Like it's almost like I don't get blacklisted as much because in people's emails because it's like they're opening. I'm keeping it really clear. I'm not sending it to a bunch of like people that don't even click it, which is how you get blacklisted. And then like. Ever since then, my emails, my open rates are just sky high. Like it, it's it's like oh, people like this, yeah. So it's sending it, 
So, I mean, it's helped me get a huge list. Yeah. yeah. Same. What do you guys use to send your email? I use Flowdesk. I just switched. I'm in Kajabi. I do everything in Kajabi. Kajabi's good. It I may not Kajabi. be the most efficient, but I got one login. They're the platform that keeps up on everything. Mm -hmm. Like, they really, they work they really hard do. to keep up on everything. But I just switched to Flowdesk, and I love it. It's what funny. is it called? Flowdesk, F-L-O. Mm -hmm. It's really clean. Their emails are, like, really happy. It's like, mm -hmm. helps, like... It just, it's cute. A lot of templates. Yeah. Love the yeah. templates. So. And then just create like a thing, like a little mini, not a funnel, but like a little mini, like two or three emails. That's like, that's what mine is at least. That's just like, Hey, like we're going to get removed. Are you, are we vibing? Like mine's like kind of funny. Like, are we vibing or no? And then it's like, I think there's one more email. There might be three, but I think there's two. And if they don't respond, if they don't click, then I just go ahead and remove them. Mm -hmm. And I never send out something that says newsletter. No. Mm -mm. Boring. Boring. Dude. Dude. And I like break the email rules too. I put emojis in my subject I do lines. Too. I do too. Like if you read that, it, it's it like does get a higher. It but does. And they say it. It's they like, say, like the spam. email people says spam will pick it up more. And I'm like, I get higher open rates. I get, I put I'm, them in every email now. I'm an emoji person. Me too. <laughs> okay. You just finished another episode of the B Word Podcast. Cheers to you. If I were with you, I would literally pop a big old bottle of Prosecco and pour you a glass. Since I'm not, why don't you do the next best thing and share this episode with one of your besties? Because we all know you've got that one girlfriend that needs to hear it. Thanks, friends.